We're up to another part of our interview, our exclusive interview with the whole band, Pablo Cruz. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. What about Love Will Find A Way? Like songs like that. I mean, they both reached, I think, number six, which uh, is amazing. Did you know? I mean, when, when an album is done, I mean, you're dealing with 12 songs or whatever the amount of songs is, and they're all your babies, whether you wrote them or not, you all worked on them. Do you, did you know? Like, Love, Love Will Find A Way, for instance, did you know you had something there? I was pretty confident we had something there. It was, but the, the thing, the funny thing about that is it took a minute to get the whole thing, the arrangement down. And we were at the record plant and, you know, get it, just getting the, the actual track down. And so we did, we got it down, we rehearsed it, played it, recorded it, and everybody listened to it. There were no lyrics, <laughs> no melodies. <laughs> it was like, yeah. our producers going, this is a hit track, you need to finish this song. Wait and a minute, then, he knew at that point. He, well, we all did. It was pretty. We, we, it was a pretty loving track, you know. It came on uh, when you heard it. You just it was just it worked. There, there were no lyrics or anything, and then and there was a huge challenge, you know. We went down to Los Angeles to finish the record, and we Dave and I were held up in this apartment, and we just beat the shit out of it to get a song. But it was really tough because it was such a good track, right? I mean, the same thing with, with, with another song on that album called Don't Want to Live Without It. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. No song. So. That's the one that Corey and I jammed on the, on the major part of the riff for two weeks in Hawaii, <laughs> just trying to come up with the lyric on the thing. Sometimes when you have a riff that's just so good that it psychs you out. It's like, where do I go with this? You know, because it's just the first yeah. part of that song is going to be a riff. And it's, yeah. like, it's like, how do I get to the next part? And how can I keep it that good? You know? I got to keep, st I have, have to be excited about the words as, as excited as the music. Because, yeah. yeah, and right. you got to know, bounce off each other to kind of get the perspective. Because you think you got something good. And then you listen to it again an hour later. Sometimes you go, well, that's really not great, is it? And so having a co-writer yeah, it's is true. great. You, you, you can follow up with your own idea. That's the problem with those kind of things sometimes. If you don't yeah. have someone there. Yo, that's the co-writing. If, if you know, two, three, four guys get together and they keep each other honest, then you got yeah. something great. Right. right. Mary and Robbie, what about you guys playing these iconic songs? Well, for, yeah, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's been such a treat. I mean, Dave Jenkins has been an influence on me since, you know, I've been a Pablo Cruz fan. So, to, to, again, it's kind of, you know, to be singing these songs, uh, it's, it's, it's a huge honor for me as well. Um, total so honor total yeah. honor I, mean, it's, I can't even tell you it's like it's like I said it's come full circle it's like wow <laughs> I'm singing for public and Corey. I try to, you know it's just Corey, yeah, she could pay cut. Gave amazing vocals back then. <laughs> I was just <laughs> it, it's yeah uh, he's getting a pay cut well let me tell you what I think about my <laughs> role in this band I've been here 10 years. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you get a gold watch. Here's a million hits right watch. here. One thing that's important, important, important to know, truly, is it, we're very lucky because we have the synergy and the friendship in this band. Because, it, because yeah. as Amen. you said earlier, bands can be really tough. I think you were kind of leading to that. And, and uh, we really have a good time on the road. A lot of laughs, and everybody is, you know, really dedicated to making it at a great show, you know, and uh, it's it's really a pleasure to have, you know, Robbie and Larry because they, they act as a huge catalyst for Dave and I so we can, you know, continue the shows. And, you know, I think it's better. The shows are better than they've ever been. Well, I was know, looking at everybody. Of, when I was looking at the resumes of uh, Larry and Robbie, there was a part of me of going, you guys are fooling around. Like, I mean, you know, obviously you two have been in the band since the beginning, but I talked to the Total Boys about this when they hired Shem and, and you know, they're okay. always hiring top, you know, really guys who have, like I said a while ago, have done the work. I'll ask both the newer guys, how did you get into the band? How does that happen? Yeah, well, I was, uh, you know, on the road with Roger Waters, 2010 to 2016. And then shortly thereafter, after the, the tour ended and Roger decided to change the band out, the timing was like perfect because I'd just gotten off the road and Larry, my brother Larry down there, we've been working together for years and 
been in several different bands around town and Larry just, they were looking for another vocalist and, and Larry put my name in the hat and said, hey, you know, I think Robbie's off the road. Why don't you give Robbie a call? And the thing is that Corey and I worked together about 20 years ago or so. We did a Hot Wheels uh, recording session called The Car Racers. I'll never forget that session. I was kind of going, oh yeah. my gosh, it's Corey from Pablo Cruz, man. Yeah, yeah. How's, how's it go, Robbie? It's the Racers! <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was hard rock. And Larry, how did it happen for you? I got a message on my answer machine. It was October 15th, 2009. Who's smelling? 3 p.m. And I was <laughs> on Ventura Boulevard. And Dave Jenkins, he it was on the on the message going, this is Dave Jenkins from Pablo Cruz. We were looking for a bass player. And I went, somebody's really messing with me, man. <laughs> and I called the number back. <laughs> And he goes, hello? And I go, is this Dave Jenkins? He goes, yes. And I, I, and I just go, well, oh, this is actually what do you want? Baby. What do you want? <laughs> and we had a conversation. He talked about it. And I was like, You're, you guys are my favorite band since all the way back. I learned all these songs way back when they came out. He goes, yeah, we're looking for, you know, we want to put, put together bass players, singer, you know, take it to the next level. And he goes, give Corey a call. He's uh, out there by you. And okay. And I called Corey and I go out to Corey's house and, we did some recording and some, I did some bass playing and some singing and I left and, and I didn't quite hear anything and he goes, come back and I came back. <laughs> and then uh, we did some more recording and he didn't say you're in the band yet, right? And I go, okay. I went home and I got my studio out. I put a drum track and the bass track for Place in the Sun and sang it down, made an MP3 and sent it to Corey. And I know I nailed it. And he listened to it, and he goes, awesome, you're in the band, with an email back to me. And I was like, woo! Uh, Pablo Cruz was actually like a three-legged dog because our bass player, the original bass player, Bud Cockrell, was an amazing bass player, and he just nailed every song that we recorded in the studio. Not, not only incredible live, great vocalist and all, but when Bud left, we kept trying to find a bass player that could fill that bill. And Bud was like Joe Cocker or something. And this guy, I don't know if you were familiar with his stuff, but he sang Place in the Sun. He sang the duet part with Dave on What You're Going to Do. And he just had this, this presence on stage that was unbelievable. I mean, he was a big part of the reason Pablo got signed a and m and all. So he leaves. We try to find a new bass player. And we did. We found a guy that would work on stage but never could really – you know, we didn't, we weren't comfortable in the studio, so we used play bass on a, a lot of our songs at that point. The, but once we found Larry, we I mean, used the full package, and he went in and learned pretty much everything but played on the records. So, and then since then, he's embellished because he's a real virtuoso. I don't like to say that in front of him, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, it was just like home, you know, we really, the band really, it all of a sudden became this really great band to play live again. Such an important part, you know, to, if you don't have a good bass player and drummer, yeah. it's, yeah. it's not a fun thing. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Mm -hmm.